Um, and there's been some discussion as to the uh, the viability and the uh, and the effectiveness of Overture 29. I actually think Overture 29 is a well-worded overture. It has it is broader than Overture 15. Uh, and uh, but like everything else, I think it it has to be not simply endorsed; it has to be enforced by church discipline. But in terms of a clear overture as to the standards uh, required uh, from First Timothy chapter three for a um, for a man to be ordained into the ministry, that's you see. These overtures have to be substantiated out of the biblical principles for ordination and requirements. And Overture 29 does it, does it well, and, and is applicable in handling some of the issues of our day and time. Now, Overture 15, I think, is more specific. It is more focused. I don't think it's a matter of either or. I think it's a both and that needs to be put in place. And I don't think Overture 29 is suspect because more people are apt to vote for it than Overture 15. I just think there's some people that have been misguided to think that our ministry to the LGBTQAI plus community is going to be truncated if we adopt Overture 15. Well, I have five folks that I am discipling this last year that have come to Christ out of the LGBTQAI uh, community, and of course we hold to Overture 15 already uh, at Briarwood in terms of standards for leadership, and I don't know any of them that were put off from attending when they were invited and from coming to Christ. Uh, on the contrary, they have gravitated to elders who can manifest not perfection in their Christian life, but the fact that sin no longer has dominion over us, and that we have the power now to say no to sin and yes to Christ, even over embedded addictive sins, the needle can and does move, so that we can flee temptation and follow Christ. So I believe uh, Overture 29 is an excellent overture, and if it passes, which it looks like it will, I am uh, rejoicing. And if Overture 15 doesn't pass, I don't see that as a defeat. I think we've still got an excellent instrument to protect the right standards of leadership and ordination and speak to the improprieties, the gospel heresies of Revoice Side B uh, Christianity. Uh, and um, and maintain integrity in our ordained leadership. People come to Christ through the power of the gospel, and they're drawn to Christ not because God's people just do different things, but because they are different. And the reason they're different is because the gospel has made a difference, not only in our declarative blessings of standing before God, justification and adoption, but also in the power of God that is manifested through the gospel promises and blessings of regeneration and sanctification. And that needs to be manifested in our elders, our ordained leadership. Godliness is more important than giftedness. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. We mourning the death of Braywood Pastor Harry Reader who died sadly on Thursday morning. It's very, very sad. It's shock and saddening uh, across the Alabama and beyond on Thursday following the death of Reverend Harry Reader, senior pastor of Brearwood uh, Pabristian Church in Shelby County. Reader, 75, who served as a 4,000th member church senior pastor since 1999 was remembered by clergy religious leader church member and elected officials as a great leader whose death leaves a great hole in the Pabrician Church of America Harry was a steward for the faith and a generally gracious man i pray for his works and i pray for his family wife 
and the entire church he so dearly loved and led said southern baptist theological seminary president albert moha pastor harry reader died due to a motor accident that occurred in shelby county we lost one of whom the world is not worthy pastor nikki but said harry was like a second father to so many of us rest in peace sending love prayers to wife and family rest in peace harry 